Hi, my name is Sam and I'm part of the overwhelming majority of British Jews who think that Corbyn is anti-Semitic and who think that the Labour Party is institutionally anti-Semitic. And it really is the overwhelming majority. Polls of British adults identifying as Jewish show 86% of British Jews thought the Labour Party was anti-Semitic in polls in September 2018 and March 2019. Those same polls asked respondents' views on party leaders, and 86 and 87% of British Jews thought specifically Jeremy Corbyn was anti-Semitic. Here's what you can expect to see over the course of this video. He's been convicted of the blood libel that Jews use the blood of children to make their bread. And you've had described been, him as an honoured citizen. And I look forward to giving you tea on the terrace because you deserve it. It should be labelled as a terrorist organisation by the British government. is really a big, big historical mistake. I met uh, many of the brothers, including the brother who's been speaking here. The Corbyn campaigned continuously for the release of two convicted terrorists. This is what Zionism has done to today, free. Trying to equate Jews with ISIS. Um, I was present when it was laid. I don't think I was actually involved in it. This is despite the fact that we have pictures showing that his wreath was laid under that plaque and that we know from the site photos that that plaque commemorates the Munich terrorist attackers. You've been given plenty of time to do it. I asked you if you wanted to apologise. Uh, and you I haven't. don't. Having lived in this country for a very long time, and probably all their lives, they don't understand English irony either. Corbyn was also an active member of a Facebook group where anti-Semitic discourse was the norm, calling a Jewish reporter a Nazi concentration camp guard after having learned that, that reporter was Jewish. He is not anti-Semitic in any way. And Zionism is the enemy of peace. Shame on this young Berger, a Zionist bitch. I hate her. I hate her baby. You are a spy. You are evil, satanic. Leave. Hashtag Labour. Hashtag Corbyn. Many regard this inquiry as a whitewash. It is that's a ridiculous. smear I'm sorry, to that's say ridiculous. that the Labour Party has a problem with well, anti-Semitism. You just set up an inquiry to look into it. He didn't even want Vicky Kirby to no. be suspended. She's he the one, by me. the way, who says Jews have long noses and slaughter the oppressed. Hey. I know that the general election is over and that Corbyn has stepped down as Labour leader, but I still think there's an important message for everyone to hear and for everyone to understand. I know that this video is long, but that's because there are loads of examples to get through. And before we start, if you're appalled by any of these examples that I'm about to show you in this video, then please, please share. Please share it with everyone you know. Share it with local activists, share it with Jews and non-Jews, share it multiple times. If you have grandparents, share it with them. If you've got grandkids, share it with them. Share it with your local politicians. And if you see anyone on Facebook or social media saying that there's no anti-Semitism, it's all a smear, what are the examples, send them a link to this video. And there are a lot of examples, but my intention in this video is not to say that every single one of these is an example of anti-Semitism. Problematic? Definitely. But only a handful explicitly cross the line. Rather, these examples should be taken together, and they show a pattern of behaviour of ignoring anti-Semitism or outright embracing anti-Semites. We'll start with examples about Corbyn, but remember, he is only part of the problem. He and other people in the party who have made anti-Semitic comments have seen enormous levels of support from within the party. This support has come in the form of denial, hostility and cover-ups. And this has led to a culture of toxic hostility towards Jews and those who speak up about the racism that they faced. This hostility can be seen at every level in the Labour Party, from student groups to constituent Labour parties to the leadership office to the leader himself. In this video we'll go through examples of what Corbyn has done that is anti-Semitic and problematic. We'll go through examples of people he's supported and groups he's supported that are outright anti-Semitic. We'll talk about what Corbyn has done to antagonise the Jewish community in the UK. We'll talk about the culture that Jews face within the Labour Party. And then we'll talk about why the Labour Party under Corbyn has become institutionally anti-Semitic. My first example is an event in 2010 on Holocaust Memorial Day called Never Again for Anyone, which Corbyn hosted in Parliament. Corbyn booked the room in Parliament, chaired the event and made the opening speech. Haidar Eid addressed the meeting on a live video link from Gaza, and this is what he said. The world was absolutely wrong to think that Nazism was defeated in 1945. Nazism has won because it has finally managed to Nazify the consciousness of its own victims. This quote is a disgusting distortion accusing Jews as victims of Nazis of adopting and affecting Nazi ideology today. The entire event is absolutely disgustingly anti-Semitic. The entire premise of the event is to report how Jews threw Israel at the new Nazis, with speakers such as Auschwitz survivor Hayo Meyer giving presentations as to convince you why. 
When this was raised in 2018, Corbyn actually apologised, saying, In the past, in the pursuit of justice for Palestinian people and peace in Israel-Palestine, I have, on occasion, appeared on platforms with people whose views I completely reject. That's a fitting apology for maybe any other incident where you unknowingly maybe shared a platform with a racist, but it utterly falls short here. The entire event is a premise and a viewpoint which you should completely denounce, and Corbyn helped organise debates in Parliament. He gave platform to and propagated these heinous and despicable ideas his apology does not even cover. Holocaust Memorial Day Trust said the event should never have taken place. He should make it clear without a labour he regrets chairing this appalling event. A year later, Corbyn had clearly absorbed these views he claims to reject. On Holocaust Memorial Day 2011, John Macdonald and Jeremy Corbyn submitted an early day motion in Parliament to rename Holocaust Memorial Day to Genocide Memorial Day, never again for anyone. The same title as Corbyn's event the year prior. Forget having rejected the views, he's actively legitimising and continuing to propel these views the next year. The next example is Corbyn's decade-long association with Holocaust denier Paul Eisen and his group Day Yassin Remembered. I have no contact whatsoever now with uh, Paul Eisen and Day Yassin Remembered. I did attend a number of events concerning Day Yassin Remembered some years ago, I think two or three of them. The only donation, if I made any, would have been in a collecting bucket going around the room. That would be all. But the Day Yassin Remembered group is run by a Holocaust denier, and he has a slightly different memory. of. He says, one evening 15 years ago, I cycled over to see you. I was just beginning to establish Day Yassin Remembered in the UK, and I wanted him to join. I'd hardly begun my feverishly rehearsed pitch before his checkbook was on the table. I have no recollection of any checkbook on the table. Was a Holocaust At that denier. time, there was, I had no evidence whatsoever that Paul Eisen was a Holocaust denier. So you when, regret when giving this, to his group now? Well, if he was a Holocaust denier at the time, yes. Corbyn is not telling the truth here. Even in 2005, Paul Eisen was a known Holocaust denier. David Aronovich writes in 2005 about Day Sen Remembered and how the Holocaust denying views of its founder, Paul Eisen, was already known. His article is criticising the Socialist Workers' Party for its links to Day Sen Remembered and other organisations associated with anti-Semitism. In 2007, the Palestine Solidarity Campaign voted to disassociate from Day Sen Remembered over anti-Semitism. Corbyn, as patron of the Palestine Solidarity Campaign and a self-ascribed anti-racism campaigner, would have been well aware of this disassociation. Yet he continued to attend their events afterwards, including one in 2013. My next example is the anti-Semitic mural. In September 2012, artist Mayor One painted a mural in Tower Hamlets. It features reference to New World Order and the Illuminati and features hook-nosed bankers playing Monopoly off the banks of the poor masses. The artist wrote that some of the older white Jewish folk in the local community had an issue with me portraying their beloved hashtag Rothschild or hash Warburg, etc. as the demons they are. The Mayor of Tower Hamlets ordered the mural removed and when Mayor One complained on Facebook, Jeremy Corbyn commented questioning why it should be taken down. The mural was unquestionably anti-Semitic. It screams Jewish bankers subjugating the poor. It smacks of the anti-Semitic tropes of conspiracy and control. Here's a Jewish momentum activist explaining why. Again, Corbyn's response was slow and painful. In 2012, Jeremy was responding to the concerns of the removal of public art on the grounds of freedom of speech. And it wasn't until the outrage of his first response that his office came out with a second response. I sincerely regret that I did not look more closely at the image I was commenting on, the contents of which are deeply disturbing and anti-Semitic. The defence of free speech cannot be used as justification for the promotion of anti-Semitism in any form. That is a view I have always held. Here, whilst giving the illusion of an apology, Corbyn is actually denying his own anti-Semitism with the excuse that he did not look closely enough. This is utterly shambolic. How can you possibly claim to be an anti-racist campaigner your whole life and not recognise the basic tenets of anti-Jewish hate? Next is where Corbyn campaigned continuously for the release of two convicted terrorists who were responsible for the dual bombing of the Israeli embassy and an office building that housed the offices of a number of Jewish charities in 1994. Twenty people were injured. Samar Alami and Jared Bokma claimed that they were framed, but they admitted possession of guns and explosives and they admitted that they had tested the homemade bombs, but claimed it wasn't to be used in Britain and only for use by Palestinian attackers. They lost their Court of Appeal in 2001 and lost their appeal again in the European Court of Human Rights in 2007. Corbyn signed five early day motions and co-sponsored one advocating for their release. But it didn't just stop at trying to get them released from jail. Once they were released from jail at the end of their sentences, Corbyn wrote a letter to the London Metropolitan University in support of Jared Botman's bid to become the governor there. Remember, these are terrorists whose defence was, we could not have been involved, we were only researching bomb making for use in Palestine, not Britain. When asked, Corbyn's spokesperson said, Jeremy believed that there had been a miscarriage of justice. 
he of course condemns all terrorist acts. No apology and no condemnation of the original attacks. Next, this is James Thring speaking on the 2nd of October 2014 and an event Corbyn's office hosted in Parliament. James Thring was a regular guest on David Duke's radio programme. Yes, KKK David Duke. And had previously said that the Jews were behind 9-11 and Jewish elders control the media. When questioned, Corbyn did not apologise, but instead said that he was unaware James Thring was going to speak. His response only raises more questions as to why Thring was even there and why no one asked an anti-Semite with links to the KKK to step down. But the other point that Corbyn's response ignores is that the scheduled speaker, Max Blumenthal, isn't a savoury character either. He had created the hashtag JSIL, Jewish State in the Iraq in the Levant, trying to equate Jews with ISIS. Although next up is Corbyn's more direct defence of someone else who said that the Jews were behind 9-11. Reverend Stephen Sizer was banned from social media for anti-Semitic conspiracy theories in February 2015. This had come six months after Sizer had attended an anti-Semitic hate-filled conference in Iran that involved multiple panel topics on Israel being behind 9-11 and other topics calling the Holocaust a Zionist myth. Corbyn wrote to the Church of England saying Reverend Stephen Sizer was being discredited to silence his anti-Zionism and he even suggested that posting the link on his social media may have been inadvertent because the internet is a complicated place. This is despite the fact that even after removing the post, Sizer continued to defend the anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. At a Palestine Solidarity campaign rally in 2008, we see Corbyn stood on stage while Ismail Patel espouses anti-Semitic hate, saying Zionism has corrupted Jews. We see the impact of Zionism on Palestinians, but it has had a devastating effect on the Jewish community itself. It has made them immoral injustice. How can you have a community that can celebrate 60 years of intimidation? How can you have a community that can celebrate 60 years of dispossession? How can you have a community that celebrates the killing of innocent Palestinian people? This is what Zionism has done to the Judaic faith. And for that reason, I salute the Jews of Justice and the Natural Right Partner who have joined us today, who have gone above Zionism and seen Zionism for what it is. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ismail. And thank you all for... Corbyn even points to the Naturei Carter, waves and claps as a response to Ismail Patel's comments. Ismail Patel was the chair of Friends of Al-Aqsa, whom later donated £10,000 to Corbyn's leadership campaign. His campaign had then not declared it, and when questioned, a spokesperson said nothing dodgy is going on. Also at the rally is Azam Tamimi, who was a supporter of Hamas, and said this. I say to the people of Gaza, do what you deem fit. If they stand you, if they deny you water, if they deny you life, explode in their faces. Do whatever you want. We say to them, there is one way, there is one way forward, and that is recognize our rights in full, all of them, all of us. It will be jihad, jihad, and jihad until Palestine is free. Well, that's one speaker who spouts anti Semitism in front of his face. And another speaker who, well, I guess you can only imagine what happens to a vulnerable listener open to radicalisation. Corbyn wrote the foreword to a 110-year-old book with numerous anti-Semitic tropes. The 1902 book by John Atkinson Hobson describes the European financial system as being controlled by men of a single and peculiar race, who have behind them many centuries of financial experience. They are in a unique position to control the policy of nations. Hobson's anti-Semitism was well known at the time. History of the Jews, a 1987 book by Paul Johnson, has a whole chapter on the roots of left-wing anti-Semitism, citing Hobson as writing Jewish financiers were to blame for the Boer War, and that no European war would go ahead without the Rothschilds backing. Hobson regarded the Jew as almost devoid of social morality. Again, when it came to apologising, a Labour spokesperson said other politicians have quoted Hobson, and it was fine to write the forward, and that he was talking about the broad ideas, not about the anti-Semitic ideas in particular. You might think that as an avid anti-racist campaigner, he might caveat his forward with a specific rejection of the anti-Semitism contained within. No, it seems, not necessary for the Jews. As with his response to the mural, his apology fell short and came too late. He had already signalled to his followers that talking about Jews in terms of controlling finance, the media or politics is fine and not something to be immediately identified as anti-Semitic and condemned. Next is Rayad Salah. Sheikh Rayad Salah was the mayor of one of Israel's largest Arab towns. In 2011, he was up for deportation by the UK Home Office. He had been jailed in Israel for raising money for Hamas, and it was already known in 2011 that he had insinuated Jews were behind 9-11, but 
peddling the false claim that Jews were forewarned not to go to work. And his anti-Semitic comments on the blood libel were already known. You regret also, I assume, describing Rayad Salah as a very honoured citizen, given that he was convicted of the anti-Semitic slander that Jews use the blood of children to make their bread. I did meet him under house arrest. We had quite a long conversation. He did not at any stage utter any anti-Semitic remarks to me whatsoever during that conversation. But he's been convicted of the blood libel that Jews use the blood of children to make their bread. And you've had described he, him as an honoured citizen. <clears throat> Had he been convicted, then I'm surprised that at that time, I'm surprised the Israeli government allowed him to travel. But he had been convicted, yes. and you described him I as an honoured citizen. I was unaware of that at the time. Right. In another misjudgment? Or no, I'm no. sorry, you're putting an awful lot of words into my mouth about misjudgments. Corbyn is claiming that he was unaware of Salah's conviction, even being angered at the suggestion, which really helps to sell the point. This, as it turns out, is a lie. Corbyn actually went to the tribunal where Salah's deportation was overturned. This next clip is of Corbyn speaking after the tribunal where it was found that Salah's comments could only be interpreted as the blood libel, i.e. accusing Jews of baking bread with the blood of non-Jewish children. And I hereby renew my invitation to Sheikh Salah to come to Parliament, meet with me, meet with my colleagues, and you will be assured a very warm welcome, and I look forward to giving you tea on the terrace, because you deserve it. Do Corbyn's words and tone sound like a man who thinks that we just need to get everyone around the table if we want peace? Or does it sound like he supports and praises this man? I was, un I was unaware of that at the time. That's the end of part one. Here's a preview of what's to come. Seven civilians were killed and 50 injured. It should be labelled as a terrorist organisation by the British government is really a big, big historical mistake. I met uh, many of the brothers, including the brother who's been speaking here. Um, I was present when it was laid. I don't think I was actually involved in it. This is despite the fact that we have pictures showing that his wreath was laid under that plaque and that we know from the site photos that, that plaque commemorates the Munich terrorist attackers. In our, in our, in our, in our, in our,